Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, sun dried versus air dried black tea. In this video, we're going to be turning the spotlight onto Bulang Hongcha, a sun dried Yunnan black tea, and we're going to be doing a taste test against the air dried Yunnan black tea. If at any point in time you enjoy this video, then make sure you hit it with a like, and if you're not following us on all of our socials, go click those buttons. I'm here with Celine. Hello. It's uh, Tuesday it's morning. It's Tuesday morning. I'm losing track of time. <laughs> it's early. We're about to head off to work, but it's tea time. We're going to have a black tea this morning. So I figured we'd do a video showing you the differences between sun dried tea and air dried tea and seeing if we can taste the difference. So the spotlight falls onto. Bulang Hong Cha. Let me do it. Yeah. We sourced this this year when we were in Yunnan province. Thank you all. You can see it's like nice gnarly leaves there. There's this kind of interesting, uh, really kind of wild look about um, this tea. So how is this tea made? So it's made in Yunnan province. It's made, you know what? Let's <laughs> just show you. Let's do a walkthrough on how to make Bulang black tea. Ready? We start with the fresh leaves. The leaves that they select um, are usually going to be autumn pickings of the Da Ye Jong. So it's the same trees that they use to make Pua tea, but they'll usually do autumn pickings because the spring tea is very, commands a very high price for Sheng Pua, so they don't use it. However, they've made a special exception for us and we have some spring black tea being made here. So this is um, the material, probably around 100 year old tea trees uh, used uh, for this and this comes from uh, Weidong in Bulang. When the um, when after they've picked it, they lay it out indoors in the shade like this and they allow it to wither. Very important phase. And when the, uh, the stem is pliable, so if I did this with the stem, it doesn't break. Right now with these, it will snap. You can see it snaps, right, easily. But once this has been withered enough so that the stems are pliable, they will then bring it for rolling. And this is the key thing now. What, what the difference is between black tea and other types of tea is that there is no heating phase in this. They're going to roll it, get all, extract as much of the essential oils and the, 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 uh, the uh, contents of the cell walls here out to expose it to the air. So come with me. I'll show you how they do that. This is the same rolling machines as they use um, for other types of tea. So you can see here, this is bringing all of those oils and the liquid in the leaf up to expose to the air. After it comes out of this machine, it's going to be a big clump. So it needs to be separated out. And they'll do that here. That's the clump of leaves there. It goes in and then just gets sieved, separated out, so that each leaf basically is going to have even exposure to the air. Okay, after the leaves have been separated, we now have to oxidize. So this is the very crucial step, oxidizing the leaves. They'll lay the leaves out, so it's allowing air to circulate through, and they'll leave it to oxidize. Now this oxidation phase depends on the weather, but usually around five to six hours if it's good weather. This is the finished oxida oxidized leaves. I'm really keen to sniff this. Beautiful material. Take a look at that. Full whole leaves, nothing broken. Gorgeous copper colors, browns, beautiful. Let's, let's stick our nose in this. Oh, it's got a, Bulang uh, Hongcha has a, has a spicy note to it that you don't get with other uh, black teas, um, especially in China. It's just that, it's that spicy, peppery note to it that I love. Oh, also, kind of camphor, medicinal notes, like a liniment smell. 
really, really interesting, spicy, um, herbal, very, very nice flavor, or very, very nice aroma, I should say. After that, they will then lay it out again, and importantly, they will sun dry the tea. They're not gonna put this into an oven to uh, heat up um, and dry. They will sun dry this tea. That's a one key difference here compared to uh, Yunnan Dianhong. Dianhong uh, tea, the, the golden bud tea, they'll usually use ovens to dry the tea, but for this tea, it's always sun dried. There you go. Now you know how to make Bulang black tea. And here is the finished result. This has been sun dried. You see if you can get in here, Celine. Again, what I love about the look of this tea is large leaves because it comes from the Daejeong variety, the big leaf variety. <laughs> really full leaves, beautiful colors. You've got, you've got beiges, you've got coppers, you've got blacks. Let's give it a smell. Obviously not as fragrant as the wet after oxidation leaves. It's been dried, but you can still pick up that peppery note. And I know that as soon as this hits hot water, it's gonna be incredible. So there you go, you've seen where it's made and how it's made. In front of us, we have three Yunnan black teas. Celine, why don't you go through them? Sure. Uh, you have Golden Bud here, uh, Yunnan black, and, oops, Ulang black. Uh, they're all from Yunnan, but the differences is the processing and uh, the age of the tea trees and the way it's picked. Okay, so this is, um, they're all from Daejeong variety, so they're all from the same variety. This one, as we said in the video, is gonna come from older tea trees, 100 to 150 years old compared to these ones, which are from younger tea trees. Um, so that's the first key difference. The second key difference is the picking. You can see this is all buds. This is buds and leaves, and this is a kind of uh, rough picking, very similar to a poor style picking where they'll pick buds, but up to three to four leaves. So very different style picking. It's not the most attractive looking tea, especially when you compare it to, to this one here, this uh, golden bud, this imperial grade golden bud, but don't let uh, the looks fool you. So that's the, the second difference is the picking, but the third and fundamental difference is that this is sun-dried. So the Bulang Black is sun-dried, whereas these two are air-dried. What that means is that these have been put through a machine where it's like a conveyor belt, that kind of snakes through hot air, and that hot air blowing on the leaves dries the leaf, whereas this one here is sun-dried. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do a taste test between two. I don't think it's fair for us to include no. the imperial grade golden bud, <laughs> purely because the picking is so different. At least with this one, the picking is a little bit more similar. So we're gonna put that one away. Um, you're gonna heat up the teaware yep. for us. So you can see the difference in the picking here. But as I said, don't let that fool you. This may look like a gnarly kind of, a bit rough picking, but that's the classic Pua style picking. That's a bud and up to three to four leaves. So basically this is kind of produced in Bulang by people who produce a lot of Pua tea. Um, and so they're kind of using the same picking, they're using the same trees. As I said in the video, they tend to use the autumn pickings of the uh, trees uh, for the black tea because the poor tea commands a higher price, but they made an exception for us. So this is spring picking uh, tea. And um, so they will use the same tea trees and then produce it into black tea. A lot of poor producers are now switching and making some black tea, but obviously they're not very, uh, a lot of them are not particularly skilled at black tea production because of the fact that they are used to making poor tea. So there's a lot of sun-dried uh, black tea, Yunnan black tea out there. Mm. Not all of it is great because of the fact that they're not really that skilled. So you wanna to try to find producers that have a lot of experience producing these types of sun-dried teas. Mm. Okay. I agree with you actually. I have tried some of this type of tea from like all tea trees that it's not, it doesn't have the fruitier notes that this one has. So yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Note, you do notice when you have a, a poor tea producer 
that's not very experienced in making yeah. sun-dried black tea and they'll make something decent because it's, yeah. it's kind of hard to screw up black yeah. tea because it is a fully fermented, fully oxidized product. Mm. So, but you know, the length of time of oxidation, the temperature during oxidation, you know, um, the uh, way that you pile the leaves during oxidation, all of those factors make a big difference in the quality of the tea. So let's quickly scope this tea, just for clarity. Season, this is April 2018. Uh, the uh, cultivar is the Daiyejong cultivar or uh, variety. Mm -hmm. The origin is Weidong in Bulang Mountains in Yunnan province in China. The picking and processing you've seen, so I don't need to describe that to you. And the elevation is around 1,700 meters. So high altitude black tea. Okay, stick your nose in there. Yes. And I will stick my nose into the Yunnan black. Ooh. Yeah, it's just not, it's like not as malty as Yunnan black. Like I, I, I've tried Yunnan black quite, quite a lot. <laughs> This one's got more of the cherry, like Huge a cherry difference. notes, you know? Massive difference. If you ever, if you want to try this, pick up both. It's a massive difference. Huge difference. So what would you say is that this one? This is much more caramelly, fudgy. And nutty, I get And nutty. Hazelnuts. Hazelnuts. Hazelnuts and, yeah. and caramel and malt. Actually, it's more malt and hazelnut than caramel. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And this one here, what do you get? Yeah, it's more like... Cooked cherries or something yeah, like that. It's got a lot more fruit, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's still got a little bit of that earthy note that you sometimes get from, well, that you get a little bit from a, I don't want to say a shoe puer because it's so strong, but it's a slight earthiness. Yeah, not, yeah. It's not as overpowering as the cherry note. <laughs> it's know? very much for me, it's got those sour fruit notes yes. to it, black currants, some gooseberries. Sour fruit notes. That's really good. It's, it's got that. It's got that slightly fermented. Uh, we've said it before, but then a bit of kombucha, kombucha. sourness <laughs> in there. So what you're noticing immediately on the dry leaf is that there's a definite effect that the sun makes. Now, as I said, just to be very clear, I'm not going to repeat it. They're they're different in terms of their picking as well, and they're from different areas. So there's other factors that are affecting it. I'm not saying this is only about the sun. However. From my experience, when you have sun-dried teas, you can uh, wash them. When you have sun-dried teas, you're pulling out a little bit more of a wild, a little bit more of a, 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 a fruitier taste come through, a little bit more spiky, complex notes come through, compared to the much mm. more pure, much more warming, much more comforting notes of an air-dried tea. When you air-dry it, there's something that's um, very cozy. <laughs> very cozy, yeah. And unadulterated in the sense that it's just a very pure taste of the tea with those little bit of a hint of a slight toastiness that comes from that air drying. But when you have sun dried, it's just a bit wilder and a little bit more complicated. And that's why you can get really good and you can get really bad. There's a certain standardization that comes from uh, air drying, of course. Like, you know, like, smells amazing. <laughs> wow. It's just so different. That's totally, the totally. It's like totally, absolutely different teas. This one is all about those roasted nuts, caramel, bit of hay. Um, there is a slight pepperiness to this. A, 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 I get a little uh, spice on my nose in it as well. I was going to say that this one, I was trying to think of tasting notes whilst we were saying that, but apricot and like there is a sour fruit but is it sour cherries or, or gooseberries maybe it's the gooseberries it's that you were gooseberries, saying gooseberries it's gooseberries and but it, it almost smells like a pua yeah doesn't it it smells like it really does smell oh almost God, yeah. like a, like a, a pua tea like an aged like an aged pua, like a naturally aged pua. Yeah, you like know? a yeah, exactly <laughs> it smells <laughs> like an uh, it's got that aged pua smell but I'm getting poor notes like gooseberries. Yeah. I'm getting poor notes like... Um, Sorry, it's not so good. Honey notes. I'm getting herbal notes and honeyed notes to it. The, definitely, I'm getting some, some of those sour fruits, cherries, gooseberries, mm. things like that. 
Mm. And this one here is so cozy, cozy carob, carob chocolate, hazelnuts, like milk chocolate. Yeah. You know. Okay. Cozies. Let's brew them up. We're brewing at 90 degrees. Yeah. That's 195 Fahrenheit. I'm more and more with these black teas. I'm looking at slightly cooler temperatures to try to bring out the top notes of those teas a little bit more. Um, and we're brewing for 20 seconds. So let it sit because it's a slightly cooler brew. Right, cool, pour it off. Let's see if there's a difference in the color. <laughs> ah, yeah, good idea. Let's get that camera to see. <clears throat> so a noticeable difference in color. So different. Darker. This is so much more red hue. Yeah, there's a lot more red in here. So this is a, a, a deep it? auburn color, isn't it? Yeah. That deep auburn color. Whereas this is more like a honeyed brown color, a, a lighter gold, more golden color. Yeah, you can yeah. show it to the camera. Try and do it so you, uh, yeah. is that right? Can yeah. You see it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Cool, let's give it a taste. So this is Yunnan Black, this is Bulan so Black. So Yunnan Black, Bulan Black. Yeah. Air dried, sun dried. Yeah. Shall I uh, serve you Yunnan Black first? Yep, yeah, sure. Da -da. Here we go. Cheers, guys. Cheers, everybody. Our morning tea, first tea of the day. Going for a black tea, so English mm. <laughs> Yeah, I know. We're really going traditional here. Right, yeah, so cozy, very um, kind of. It has a sweet, yeah, caramel, and then there's a little little menthol note, like little yeah. fresh note yeah. to it. So you're getting a very classic Dian Hong taste. Mm. We're getting malt. We're getting. Because it's got some of those leaves in, not just buds, we're getting a little bit more strength. Mm -hmm. That means you're getting some dark chocolate notes coming through. And then a bit of fruits as well. Yeah, the fruits are there. What fruits would you say they are? Mm, I want to say like raisins and... <laughs> yeah, dried raisins. Dried raisins. But, and... but light. It's, it's a, light, a light fruitiness. Yeah, it's a light fruitiness. Almost like a prune. prune kind of aftertaste to it. Mm -hmm. So we're getting caramels, uh, um, nuts, a mm. little bit of chocolate, Yes. Um, a little bit of um, that chocolate, dark chocolate bitterness to it, and a little bit of fruit persisting on the finish. Yeah. But the finish is relatively clean. A little bit of vanilla and yeah. the, uh, the aftertaste. Yeah. Very clean. But I mean, and it's not still too drying either. No, not drying. But that's yeah. also to do with the fact that 90 degrees. That's what I'm saying. Keep the temperature down on it and you're going to re reduce the astringency. Nice. Um, I mean, it persists. I'm still getting flavor yeah. in my mouth. A nice warming, fudgy. Yeah, fudgy. vanilla fudgy flavor. Mm. Beautiful tea. Mm. Okay, let's try... The Boulang Black. Yeah. So now we're moving to the sun dried. Put your cup there. Yes. Oops, it sorry, definitely sorry. looks more dark and auburn and a little bit more red color. Yeah. All right, so sun dried tea. Cheers, Cheers. everybody. Totally and utterly different. Like I'm getting this tea. instant fruity yeah. kick on the size of my tongue. Yeah. But it's like you're drinking um, syrup. It just has like a, as it enters your mouth, the, t the texture is quite thick compared to the Yunnan black. Yeah, I would agree. Slightly thicker. Yeah. And, and there's like a, a honey note. Yeah. That hits your tongue. Yeah. Maybe it's a, it's a herbal honey. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah, yeah, exactly. It's got more of those complicated notes to it. It's got more. Wow. It's definitely got wow. more of those poor style notes. You're getting definitely a herbal honey. Mm. I like that because it's slightly bitter, but then sweet, like um, like a honey. Like uh, if you've taken honey and you've you've uh, soaked some Chinese herbs in there. Yeah. So yeah. it's got a slightly herbal honeyed taste. Maybe, maybe some dates in there. Jujube, definitely. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I'm getting a lot <laughs> of favorite. red dates, a lot of red dates. Again, a classic poor profile taste. Um, a lot yeah. of red dates. I'm getting um, some hay. I'm getting uh, more minerality, definitely. Yeah. I was just going to say there's like a, um, a savory, not a savory note, but like a saltiness, which is actually mm -hmm. that minerality yeah. that you get with poor. There's is, a saltiness. It yeah. definitely persists on the tongue as well for longer in terms of a, a, a mineral uh, finish. Yeah. And I'm getting just more fruits, just a lot more fruits. Go for it. I forgot which is the Yunnan like and the Bulang like. Yeah? We'll definitely taste it. Okay. <laughs> um, so the question is, what is happening here? Of course, as I said, the trees, the picking, etc. But in my experience that when you sun dry the tea, and that this is why sun drying is a fundamental requirement mm -hmm. for all poor tea, for all poor tea, it needs to be sun dried. But when you sun dry a tea, what's happening is you're um, obviously drying it at a different length. It's going to take a little bit longer. Right. Um, you're also um, drying it under full UV light. Right. So those that UV light um, must have an effect on the compounds and the aromatics that are created or amplified. Um, during that drying process because the drying process when you're taking water out of the leaf you're concentrating flavor right, right? Um, but you're also changing it and there have been studies done specifically with oolong tea that show that when you wither mm. or you put tea leaves under the sun versus mm. indoors it does change the aromatics and right. the terpene profile of the tea so this is not something that's just kind of airy fairy this is definitely something which has been borne out with other tea research being done, sun drying has an effect. We're not saying mm. that sun drying is better. No, it's just a different, it's a yeah. different processing. You may prefer more uh, air dried versus sun dried or the other way around. Or just different you know? teas for different times. This for True. me is a very comforting, yeah, that's Yunnan Black, is a very comforting, multi, smooth, the smoothness on this, yeah, right? Yeah. It, this one has definitely more minerality. More it's got punch. more of a bite to it, mm. as you'd expect again no. um, from poor producers. This one here, much purer in terms of its 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 uh, flavor profile. It's very nice. It has a very clear band of yeah. flavors, yeah. warming and comforting and smooth, and the texture on it is definitely still relatively thick it's still thick but i don't know i think there's um maybe it's the minerality with this one that makes it feel more full does does that make you yeah mm. i think that i would describe it as this this one they have the same kind of viscosity or thickness mm. in terms of this they're both quite syrupy but because of the minerality in the boulin black it just feels like it's got more texture to it right you know, Maybe that's what it is. It feels like uh, uh, like a little bit crunchier. You know how you sometimes <laughs> have mineral water. You know how you have something mineral yeah. water that's very mineral rich and you can just, it feels a little bit, in a way, less syrupy right. than this one, right. but more dense. Right. But the flavor yeah. is totally different. Mm. Totally Black currant I'm getting. Black Ooh, Cherries, yeah. cherry, cherry sweets. I was thinking that there's cherry uh, cough syrups. Yeah. Because it has that herbal note yeah, to it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> really reminded me of that. But it's very complex because it's got that, but it's it's got a little bit of like whiskey note to it. Is it a whiskey note? Maybe like you're talking about the cask. The cask, yeah. I yeah. Think it's like maybe smelling a cask like the. Yeah, the it does have a little bit more of, of that. It just has. Um, I would say a more varied flavor mm. profile. You're getting woods, you're getting fruits, you're getting a little bit of cream, you're getting a lot of uh, rocks and, and wet rocks, you're yeah. getting some hay, yeah. whereas this one here is nuts, fudge, malt, Milk chocolate. dried grass. It's a little bit more kind of um, fitting within a certain bandwidth of yeah. flavors. This one here, and that's the, for me, is, is probably a lot to do with the sun drying process. If you had to describe it as a person, <laughs> these two teas, would you, what would you say? As a person? Yeah. Would you say like, 
This is a... This is the kind of person that I would like to um, have potentially as your flatmate or roommate, right? <laughs> okay. Because they're never, they're just going to be chill, easy. calm, easy, really, really nice. You can get into a good conversation with them. True. It's all kind of comforting and good. True. This one's a little bit wilder. Yeah. Yeah. This is your party this person. This is your party person or this is somebody who's going to be a little bit more of a, uh, yeah, a bit more of a complex Ooh. character in your life. Yeah. But has an incredible charm to it. Yeah. Charm. Charming, but headstrong. Yeah, it's definitely potent. It's definitely got that little bit more spikiness and character mm. um, that comes from those uh, poor producers and the way that they produce. I mean, yeah. in terms of sun drying versus air drying, I guess there would be a difference if you say sun dried a tomato versus right. oven baked a tomato. You could right. imagine that there would be a difference in flavor. Or, for example, it's probably not a great example, but I'll throw it out there anyway. You know, if you dry clothes outside oh. versus drying clothes in a dryer, right? Big difference. It's going to have that different yeah. smell to it, different yeah. uh, aroma profiles. Obviously, the clothes aren't reacting to the air and creating <laughs> new terpenes. But just as a kind of metaphor, the there's smell. something about drying it out in the sunshine, mm. which changes the complexity of the tea. Let's show the, the wet leaves sure. to everybody out there. Ta -da. They look relatively similar now. They do. It's more through the liquor that you really see the difference. Yeah. When I was getting lost, I just saw the liquor. I was like, yeah, that's clear. Okay, so let's do one last infusion. Yes. I'm getting my little tea buzz now, getting a little wake up. Have a bit more yin and black since I've got some left. Thank you. And of course, the golden bud here, just to throw in this <laughs> last reference here, Brilliant. is probably the most malty, right? Right. But also, I would say lighter right. in terms of color. It's going to be even more golden liquor. It's got that. It's got some of the delicacy of a whiter tea, of right. a white tea, right. thrown in. Sure. So you're getting a, a nice, more delicate, very, very, very smooth. Yeah. Doesn't have hardly any astringency at all in it. So mm. if you want a very smooth, malty, more delicate tea, then the golden imperial bud. grade golden bud is for you. But this just goes to show same area of the world, uh, same province in China, same variety of tea tree, um, different pickings, slightly different processing can have a wildly different effect on the flavor. So different. <laughs> but that's the fun part about tea. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Cheers. These little fishies, he's getting a, he's it got, getting, it got fed. He got fed. <laughs> These are either about to be released or have already been released. Oh yeah. So if you're interested in picking up this little, Fish tea pet. We finally found them. We finally found them. Mm. We got so many requests for that fish tea pet, so we've been searching yeah. around for it. So there you go. All right, Don't let's pour these. Color but, difference still there. You can see you've got a much lighter version. It's starting to be similar, but this is still more yellow. It's more yellow and lighter. Yeah, and this is much more red. All right, hue. last sip of golden, uh, sorry, you. Yunnan black. Thank you very much. Cheers. Third infusion. Mm. Oh my God. And it's just consistent as well. Yeah. I think that this is the thing that I want to try and point out is that, again, not better or worse. Yeah. There's a certain consistency. There's a certain... S there's a certain purity in the mm. air drying process. In a way, it's quite comforting, you know, because oh, you just know comforting. it's like, yeah. okay, this is what I'm going to get yeah. <laughs> with these infusions. And it would work super well with cakes mm. as well. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Chocolate cake. Oh. It would work really well. It would work very, very well. Thank you. Whereas you've got the dark brooding. That is so dark. More complicated, more spiky. Almost looks like in the cup, it looks dark as dark as a shoe pour, but obviously yeah. through there has got more of that black tea hue. And definitely more dryness and minerality on the tongue. Ooh, so mineral. But a nice um, cooling 
menthol. Yeah. There, I'm getting a lot of cooling yeah. now, actually. Yeah. So when I breathe in and out of my mouth, I can feel that minty coolness. Mm. Mm. Really, really good. We're going to quickly smell the empty Gong Dao Bays, which is Sounds why I'm good. guzzling through these teas. Mm. So have a sniff of that. Thank you. Talk to me about the aroma and also about the intensity of the aroma. Okay, so I get like a frangelico thing, which is more that nuttiness mm -hmm. that yeah. comes through a lot, that hazelnut. So hazelnut liqueur. Hazelnut liqueur. Very good tasting though, actually. Um, there's a little golden syrupness oh, to it. you're on fire. Just keep going, yeah. yeah. But I think you've nailed <laughs> it. Frangeli it. <laughs> frangelico and golden syrup, nice strong aroma. Have a sniff of this one, see if you can go for two for two. Oh my God, I feel the pressure now. <laughs> Totally Chinese red dates, to be honest. That's oh my God. pretty much so what I'm getting. Isn't it? It's yeah. super different. Yeah. Much more herbal. Much more herbal. I'm getting distinct honey notes. Yeah, I was gonna say. Honey and red dates is... And figs. Figs. Oh. You know how figs have that... They naturally have a little bit more of that woody note to it That's compared really to other dried fruits. You get little notes of... Um, yeah. Of liniment in there. Liver what? Liniment, you know, the things that you put on your muscle, muscle rub. Oh, you know, wow. Just a okay. tiny bit. A tiny bit. But, but the fig thing, yeah, yeah. totally. Figs, to. red dates, honey. Yeah. What did you say? Frangelico, Frangelico and golden, golden syrup. syrup. That pretty much says it all. <laughs> so there you go. Sun dried versus air dried tea. I highly recommend that you check mm. out the difference for yourself so that you can understand the difference that the sun makes in the processing of tea. Yep. That's it, tea heads. If you made it to the end of this video, then make sure you hit it with a like. Follow us on all of our socials so that you don't miss out on any news and videos from Made HQ. If you're ever in London, then come visit us in Camden to say hi and taste our wares. If you have any questions, comments, or video ideas, then please fire them over. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. This is Celine. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. See ya. Bye bye.